Welcome to iPad Pros, the show all about professionals using the iPad to be productive and get work done. I'm Tim Chatton, host of the show. Today's episode is all about podcasting on the iPad, what hardware is needed, what apps and services I use, and some other tips and tricks for getting the job done entirely on the iPad. First, a quick introduction before we get into this podcasting workflow. As many of you may know, I produced the iPad Possibilities podcast from 2010 to 2011. Over those two years, I produced around 200 episodes all about the iPad in its very early days. Now that the iPad has matured, it's now a good seven years old. I'm really excited to dig into what can be done and what is being done on iOS on the iPad as it is now turned into a very real computer and in many ways better than the traditional operating systems out there to get work done. So with that, let's get to the very first workflow we'll be covering on this show, iPad Pros, and that is podcasting. Let's first start off with what is a podcast to know what the task is, what we're trying to accomplish by rec- by producing a podcast entirely on the iPad. So As you're listening to this, you probably know a podcast is audio or sometimes a video broadcast distributed via the internet. It's as simple as that. It can be recorded either solo as this episode is or in groups. In groups, as many of you may know, is where most podcasting workflows gets screwed up by iOS and the iPad, but that's not really the case for my workflow, as I'll explain in a little bit here. Then that recorded file needs to be edited and sent up to Libsyn or Pippa or one of the other many podcast hosts that are out there. And I'll dive into what that entails. And then finally, most podcasters would create a WordPress or some other website update announcing the episode and having a home for it on their own website. Uh, My website is ipadpros.net. And that is where this episode will be posted. And then some people will do like a MailChimp newsletter update or some kind of email blast to let people know all about it. So that's what a podcast is and kind of the what needs to be done. So let's get into the hardware that I will be utilizing to produce this podcast and that I use to produce other podcasts for my professional life. So here's the hardware that's making all this work. The first piece is the iPad itself. I'm using a second generation 512 gigabyte 12.9 inch iPad Pro. And the gigabyte capacity I find very useful, especially as I spit out video versions of the podcast and require lots of just raw data to be on here and not worry about that device filling up. So that capacity I find really helpful. Of course, this can be done with lower capacity models as well. The microphone I'm using is the Audio-Technica ATR2100. It's, I believe, $65 on Amazon. The price kind of fluctuates. But this microphone is unique in that it's both USB-based and XLR-based. So you can choose either input or output, I should say. And it's really useful on iPad, uh, especially because when I'm just doing a solo show like this, I can hook this microphone up directly to the iPad with the camera connection kit. I'm using the USB 3 camera connection kit, but the older model will work as well. The USB 3 camera connection kit, of course, allows you to charge your iPad at the same time, which is a nice added benefit. But I will also use the XLR output from this microphone and use that in a combination with my Zoom H6. And that device is really helpful for when I'm doing group podcasts. That is more than one person, more than me. We're talking over the internet, over Skype, over FaceTime, over some voice over IP solution. And that allows me to record my audio into the Zoom H6 and then record the Skype conversation into that same Zoom H6. So the Zoom H6 is a recording device, costs, I believe, $350. And it allows four XLR inputs as well as this fifth input of a line in. So what the setup here to get this set up is you do a line out from your iPad's headphone jack. And that line out goes into the Zoom H6, which you're able to adjust the levels of in real time with a little knob. And you're also able to input your XLR microphones into that same recorder. So you're getting simultaneous simultaneous recordings of both the line out from your iPad, which is only the Skype recording. Nothing else goes through that there. Your own audio doesn't go through there. It's all isolated to that one track. 
And then on separate tracks are the XLR inputs, in which case it's just my own XLR microphone. So I'm able to get two really good tracks out of that. If I had multiple guests, I would have to have those guests on the same input, which I'd be in that same situation if I was on my Mac as well. So if I want to do all the recording by myself and not do double-ended recordings where they're recording their own audio, this solution works really well. Another key component to this is hearing what they're saying. So the line out from the iPad goes into the Zoom H6, and the Zoom H6 has a headphone jack of its own in which I can hear what my iPad is sending to the Zoom. So I can hear the iPad's audio, I can hear my own audio to see if something is happening with my mic, and I'm able to record all that onto this SD card that the Zoom H6 has and have this really high quality recording that is self-contained to that recording device and it allows me to record worry-free. If an iPad app crashes, if something happens, it's all secure. And that's something that I've had recordings crash on the Mac before with Piezo or Audio Hijack Pro with something fouling up there. It is really nice having that all external, externally recording. So with that said, the final piece of hardware is what is known as the Mobile Light G3. This is available in two different versions. The version I got cost me only $25 on Amazon. I believe it's back ordered right now. And there's a $100 model as well that has built-in storage. But the Mobile Light Wireless G3 is a Kingston device. And it does a lot of different things. First off, it's a portable router. So you can plug an Ethernet port into it, or it can extend a wireless network. So that's feature number one, a portable router. The second feature, and this is the big feature, is the fact that it takes SD cards as well as USB input and will read SD cards as well as USB thumb drives and hard drives and allow you to transfer those to your iPad at wireless AC, 802.11 AC speeds, which I found to be quite fast. In fact, in my testing, faster than the the built-in MacBook Pro's SD card reader to transfer that to my iPad. Now, this was an older MacBook Pro with a slow spinning hard drive, but nonetheless, a couple years old MacBook Pro had a slower time transferring a 500 megabyte file. This was a very long audio recording to the, to it was slower to do that to the Mac than it was to use this device to transfer it. So a pretty sweet solution to get the audio onto the iPad itself to do your, your editing. This device will also function as an external battery. I don't really use it as that, but it can charge an iPhone with it as well. So lots of different features. That's the Mobile Light G3. So that is the hardware I'm using to make this all work. Now let's get to the software and the rest of the workflow. So the first piece that I need to mention is Mobile Light's own app. This app allows you to browse the SD card and shoot off the audio files right to Ferrate, which is the app that I use to edit and sometimes record audio as I'm doing now. So I'm using Ferrate to record this audio you're listening to on the iPad, but I can also send audio into that directly through Mobile Light G3. And it, this app does support split screen multitasking on iOS 9 and later. So I can have Fairlight right next to Mobile Light G3. So you're not bouncing between app and app. It's just staying right there. And it's much faster. If you're dealing with multiple file transfers, it'll just send it over and you can just continue on to the next file. So Mobile Light's app is the first piece, but Ferrite is the next piece of this. Ferrite is a free to download app, but $20 unlocks the full uh, capacity of what this app can do. I started out my podcasting career with GarageBand, as many do. And once I started to learn Ferrite, I realized how much time I was wasting in GarageBand trying to manipulate the audio, move tracks around, and things of that nature. Ferrite does an amazing job includes a lot of advanced features. It's got strip silence, so it lets you isolate the audio tracks to more concisely edit your podcast. It includes things like MP3 chapter markers, which is a pretty advanced feature that is starting to see more widespread support. It includes everything you could possibly want to get the job done. It's, it's basically custom built for podcasters, including new custom keyboard shortcuts, which I've got set up 
to basically en enable my left hand not to need to move at all in the keyboard and my right hand to do other on-screen tasks with the Apple Pencil. So here is my custom keyboard shortcuts I've got set up now that I am in love with. So what I do is I rest my main keys as I would a computer video game on S, D, F with the option to go up to E and over to G. So I've got these main keys that I'm hitting as well as the space bar. With G, I move over uh, and I'm able to split the track at the playhead. So I'm able to split the track, which is really useful as you're editing. I'm able to hit E where it selects all the following tracks and clips. So when I use this, it's after I've made a cut and I need to move all the, the tracks backwards. So I hit E and I can move, I can select all the tracks and then with S, I can move the playhead to the prior clip. So that lets me very quickly select all the following tracks and then use S to move back to the prior play uh, to the prior clip and have those all lined up and do that really quickly. F is also there if I need to go to the next clip. And so I'm able to move the playhead, I'm able to select all the tracks, and with D, it'll actually move all the selected clips directly to the playhead. And with spacebar, you got play and pause. And then if I need to cut something, which I do frequently, I have the on-screen uh, shortcut set up in the middle part of that screen to just tap it with the Apple Pencil to cut it or delete it. So the, the cut was not uh, able to be moved from Command X, but what I did is I just set up the on-screen shortcut to be only that, so there's no way to miss. I just can hit that and it deletes it. A very fun app to be working in to edit the podcast with. And I do a lot of editing for different shows. And this tool has been a godsend. A, another really important feature that they added a while back is Levelator within this application. So during the export process, you can choose to have the file leveled, which is a really important step so nothing jumps out and the tracks all sound like they're supposed to be together. There used to be a tool we used to depend on called Levelator and its future is kind of hazy. It broke one version back on the Mac and it's been repaired, but it's really nice having it all in one place. So I'm able to use that to get a good sounding leveled file at the end and it's really fantastic. From there, you're able to edit the metadata of your track right within Ferrite. That includes album artwork, that includes chapters, as I mentioned earlier, and you're able to spit that out as an MP3 with various options to do so. My export option is 128 kilobytes as a mono file. That's what I think is delivers a really good result and sets it as an MP3. And from there, I can send it to Transmit to do an FTP upload or I can use the Files app with iOS 11 and with drag and drop, I can actually drag and drop that audio file from the Files app directly into Safari to upload it to Pippa, which is the service I'm using to host my files. Pippa supports drag and drop with iOS 11 and it's really quite a fast thing to do to just Let's send this to the Files app. Let's open Pippa. Let's create a new podcast episode and drag and drop that file in there and it uploads it right away. So that's what I'm using for this podcast. I'm just exporting to the Files app. I've got a folder. It's all stored right there. And drag and drop it right into Pippa from the iPad. Now, another step I do is I create a YouTube version of this podcast and right now I'm just doing audio with a little YouTube thumbnail. To create those YouTube thumbnails, I'm using Pixelmator and just updating the title of it. And it just provides another option for those that want to catch the podcast via YouTube. I do a Pixelmator YouTube thumbnails, how I create that. And I create the actual video with LumaFusion Pro. LumaFusion Pro, I believe, is $20 on the App Store. I believe it's normally 40 it is the closest application I've seen to Final Cut Pro 10 on iOS. It includes a ton of advanced features, a great user interface, and really is a breath of fresh air after seeing so many terrible video editors and the limitations that Apple did with iMovie. This application is the real deal. LumaFusion Pro, that's what I use to get the YouTube version of the show out there. 
Uh, you can directly upload to YouTube from there, or you can go to the camera roll and use YouTube.com uh, to upload from Safari. Now, I'll go in more into LumaFusion Pro in future episodes as we dive more into video editing software on the iPad and what capabilities are out there for that. I'll use Ulysses for show notes and organization for preparing for this show. Ulysses is a really fantastic text editor application, markdown application, and my favorite tool to capture my thoughts and have them in a way that is really pleasant to look at. And I'm using it right now as my notes as I go through this workflow. And finally, Skype or FaceTime is what I'll be using to record interviews with people about their iPad workflows as we continue on with this show. Whatever interviews I need to do, I'm able to just use any voice over IP application and record it in the method I talked about earlier today. So that is the software I use to get all, the, all this done. Now, I mentioned Pippa. Pippa was free when I signed up, but it is now a $12 a month service to host podcasts. And there's going to be an ad marketplace for the service, and they've got good analytics and it's something I'm trying out and ex am excited to use. I also use WordPress.com for iPadPros.net. And I'm sure in future episodes, I'll be diving more into how I'm using that with my iPad. I am operating that site entirely from my iPad, and I have a workflow set up to help me automate posting the episodes there. I have, for example, a workflow set up to do the PIPA embed code where it has the standard embed code and then has an ask with run variable that I just type in the episode title and it will give me an embed code that works for that episode. I'm going to explore what other automation tools I can use to do the WordPress posting to make posting these episodes even more efficient from my iPad. Another thing I'm going to dive into later is MailChimp. It's something I'm going to start doing for iPad Pros, and I want to explore what that process is like on the iPad to manage a email newsletter directly from iOS and the iPad, and that'll be a future topic as well, but that is a part, I believe, of the podcasting process. So this was start to finish, recording a podcast, editing it, getting it out there into the world. It's all done on the iPad. It's actually really easy on the iPad, even doing Skype interviews. I should mention the final bit about the Skype interviews on the iPad is the internal mic is what my co-hosts will be hearing as I do the interviews, which I don't think is that terrible of a solution, but it is something I'm aware of maybe changing with the possibility of having one of those dongle microphones that plugs in via the lightning port. And what that setup will have is just a better microphone that the iPad's using that's just kind of standing there, standing by with the lightning port and still able to capture everything else with the Zoom H6 as I would otherwise. So that is the workflow for getting a podcast done on the iPad. If you have any questions about this workflow, if you have any tips for improving it, please send your feedback to iPadProsPodcast at gmail.com. That's iPadProsPodcast at gmail.com. There's also a contact form at iPadPros.net. You can fill that out and get in touch with me there. Thanks for listening to this episode of the iPad Pros. I'm Tim Chen. You can find me on Twitter at T-C-H-A-T-E-N. And you can go to the website, iPadPros.net, to see some of the hardware I talked about in a little video I did about this podcasting workflow. Thanks for listening to this episode of iPad Pros.